Hi, I'm Kathy Camfer from Multnomah County Library, and today we're going to talk about some really great books that I think you're going to love to read. What is the Mirrors and Windows concept anyway? Rudine Sims Bishop is a Black professor who taught children's literature at the College of Education and Human Ecology from 1986 to 2002. And she came up with this concept in her 1990 article, Mirrors, Windows, and Sliding Glass Doors. So we like to remember her for it and credit her for it. And she talked about the importance of providing students access to what she called mirror text. When children cannot find themselves reflected in the books they read, or when the images they see are distorted, negative, or laughable, they learn a powerful lesson about how they are devalued in the society of which they are a part. In addition to serving as a mirror for me, the text served as a window for many of my classmates who had only experienced reflections of themselves in books, never experiencing the power of a window text. Books are sometimes the only place where readers may meet people who are not like themselves, who offer alternative worldviews. So she came up with the idea that books can be mirrors where we see ourselves reflected in our cultures and our families, but they can also be windows to the outside world where we see all kinds of other people, other lifestyles, other time periods, and things that open our world. When Stars Are Scattered by Victoria Jameson and Omar Mohammed. Born in Somalia, Omar and his younger brother Hassan are stuck in a Kenyan refugee camp called Adab. Their father was killed in the war and their mother is missing. They have a foster mother, Fatuma, but their days in the camp are long, stressful, and boring. Omar worries about getting help for his brother who is nonverbal and suffers from occasional seizures. When Omar gets a chance to attend school, he's torn. It opens the door to opportunities, but it means leaving his brother with Fatuma for a few hours every day. Omar fears that abandoning his brother would be selfish, but Fatuma convinces him that when God presents you with opportunity, you mustn't turn away from it. And once Omar starts school, he sees that his absence actually allows Hassan to grow and mature. Based on Omar Mohammed's true life story, this graphic novel includes a follow-up about what happened to the boys when they finally left the refugee camp. And here's a picture of the inside of the graphic novel so you can see what the comics look like. And here's another one too. My next book is called The Sky at Our Feet by Nadia Hashimi. When Jason D. Riazzi witnesses his mother, an undocumented Afghani immigrant, get taken in by police, he takes off on the run. From his home in New Jersey, he heads for Penn Station, hoping to connect with his Aunt Seema. But when he faints from hunger on the train platform, he lands in the hospital with a concussion. Max, another young patient, befriends him, and they plan their escape before authorities can track him down. At first, Max claims to be a genius, but it turns out her reason for running is that she is epileptic and she wants to escape both her parents' overprotectiveness and the upcoming operation on her brain scheduled soon at the hospital. The two take off via subway in New York and have many adventures in the city. But when an Amber Alert goes out and then Max has an epileptic attack, their adventures turn into a nightmare and it seems like their flight to freedom might soon be over. Hello, my name is Kimberly. I'm a bilingual Spanish school corps librarian. And today I wanna to talk to you about a couple stories. First, I wanna talk about a graphic novel called Illegal by Owen Colfer and Andrew Donkin, illustrated by Giovanni Rigano. Ibo's brother Kwame has left for Europe to find their sister Cece. Kwame promises to get the money to bring Ibo over, but Ibo cannot bear to lose another person in his family, so he becomes determined to leave Ghana to find his brother in Europe, even if it means it will be a long and challenging journey. Ibo has to cross the Sahara Desert to get to Tripoli. 
Once there, he has to raise money somehow to buy passage on a boat, while at the same time avoid being caught by the authorities. He pays for a ride on a boat to cross the Mediterranean, only to discover, once out to sea, that it has a faulty engine and is running out of fuel. Will he survive the trip? What happens if the boat filled with refugees starts to sink with no land in sight? This graphic novel is a look into the dangerous things a young refugee can face and the different reasons people take on similar crossings. It will make you question how any human as courageous as evil would be considered illegal. The next book I want to tell you about is a collection called Don't Call Me Crazy. 33 Voices Start the Conversation About Mental Health, edited by Kelly Jensen. One of the best ways to deal with rumors and misunderstandings about mental health is to listen to each other's experiences. This collection of works by 33 writers covers topics like obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, PTSD, misphonia, or when sounds like chewing or nail tapping trigger an upsetting emotional response, and other mental health experiences. It also includes discussions about how gender, sexuality, and ethnicity affect how mental health is treated and viewed. Author Adam Suvera talks about how cheerful and successful people can still suffer from depression. Hannah Bay shares how her disruptive home life was a factor in her paranoid thinking. Amy Reed explains how recovery from addiction is a lifelong process. And Yor Vargas points out that mental health is often considered a quote unquote white problem only. This collection shares not just about different conditions, but lots of ways of coping and healing too. If you've ever felt alone or scared about mental health, this book will reassure you, you're not alone. Hi everyone, I'm Jackie, another one of the School Corps librarians, and I'm gonna tell you about another couple of great books. The Best At It by Malik Pancholi. Rahul is feeling some anxiety about starting seventh grade. He's tired of being bullied by Brent Mason, the most obnoxious kid in the school, who's always asking Rahul if he's gay. Then Rahul's grandfather gives him some advice. If you dedicate yourself to something and become the best at it, then nothing can stop you. Rahul consults his best friend, Chelsea. What should he try to be the best at? Chelsea says he should just practice doing something he likes until he gets better at it. Like, he's good at math, so he should join the school's mathletes team. No way, thinks Rahul. That's nerd central. He knows Brent would bully him even more if he were on the mathletes. Then, Rahul hears about football tryouts. He's never been a great athlete. He runs really slow and can barely catch a ball. But maybe this is his chance. Could he be the best at it? And then Wink by Rob Harrell. More than anything, Ross wants to be a normal middle school student, but his life drastically changes the summer before seventh grade when doctors find he has a tumor above his right eye. After surgery, he's left with a scar on his forehead and a droopy eyelid, making it look like he's permanently winking. Daily radiation treatments make his skin so sensitive he always needs to wear a big hat, even inside, and cover his skin with slimy lotion. So much for being anonymous. To make things even worse, one of Ross's best friends will no longer talk to him, and someone has started sharing cruel memes with his picture in them. When his radiation technician introduces him to playing the guitar, Ross finds an outlet for his angry feelings. Will this be what it takes for the other students to see him as more than just a cancer patient? Hi, my name is Tanya and I would like to share a couple of books with you that I think you'll enjoy. The first one is So Done by Paula Chase. Best friends Jamila Mila Phillips and Matai Ty Johnson have always been there for each other but the summer between 7th and 8th grade puts their lifelong friendship to the test. Mila spends most of her summer visiting her aunt away from Pirate's Cove, the housing project where both girls grew up. When she returns, it's obvious Mila has changed. 
She hates the cove, and she also doesn't want anyone to call her by her nickname Bean anymore. Even more troubling to Ty, Mila doesn't want to follow Ty's lead anymore. In the past, dance class united the girls, but now Mila is thrilled to an audition in ballet for a new talented and gifted arts program. While Ty feels like the program will be the same old thing, just another program for low-income kids that goes nowhere. Underlying it all is a secret the girls share, one that makes Mila fear going to Ty's house and makes Ty furious at her loser dad. If you like books like The Hate You Give and Yaki Delgado is going to kick your ass, stories which deal with the intersections of friendship, families, racism, class, and the struggles of both being yourself and growing into being someone new, you'll love so done. The next book I would like to share with you is Undocumented, A Worker's Fight by Duncan Tonatiu. This book tells the story of two journeys, one a physical migration, the other a journey towards awareness. When Juan, a Mixteco speaking man, crosses the border from Mexico to the U.S., he ends up working as an undocumented busboy in a restaurant. A Chinese co-worker reveals how their boss is cheating them, paying them not even half the minimum wage. Juan decides to do something about it. Inspired by an organizer at a nearby worker center, he rallies co-workers together to file a legal complaint against the boss to change their working conditions. This book honors the courageous journeys many immigrants make to better their lives and the power of collective activism to change things. If you read this book in paper instead of online, it has an unusual format. Instead of the pages being stapled together into a book, they unfold like an accordion into one long page. Why would that be a great format to tell the story of a journey? Hello friends, my name is Violeta and I have a couple of books to share with you, starting with Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. Robin grew up with her mom in Korea, so when her mom decides to move to Alabama and to marry Mr. Kim, Robin's life gets turned upside down. She struggles in school, she's bullied because she's Korean and doesn't know English, and it seems like she'll never make friends. But her talent for drawing and comics changes everything. This graphic novel memoir captures the experiences of being an immigrant and loving comics. Next up is The Other Half of Happy by Rebecca Balcarel. Quijana is a Guatemalan American girl who has always known who she is and been content with her bicultural identity. Now that she's older though, she's starting to feel like maybe this whole time she was wrong and she isn't Guatemalan enough. It all started when her cousins came to Texas. They are totally different from her. They speak Spanish fluently and know more about the family and her heritage than she ever learned. Then her parents announce that they are planning a family trip to Guatemala. All of Quijana's insecurities about her identity become more serious. She can barely even communicate with her grandmother on the phone. Quijana is sure it will be completely awful to be the only one who can't understand what's going on. So, she comes up with a plan to run away and go stay with her other grandmother in Florida before her parents can make her get on that plane. She just needs to figure out a way to get there without anyone finding out. Will her plan work? Read the book to find out. Thank you so much for listening and make sure that you check out the description below for a link for the book list with all the books on this list. Thank you so much. Gracias. Adios.